Today I will be showing you a 2016 crime thriller horror film titled Don't Breathe, Look Out and Be Cautious. An elderly man is dragging a young woman by her hair through an apparently abandoned neighborhood street. A group of young individuals consisting of two men and one woman unlock the door to a mansion. One of them prevents the alarm from activating. As they enter the home, the individual who appears the most anxious repeats their rules about not bringing cash and grabbing only items under 10 grams. They quickly enter and exit the residence. Before leaving, they reactivate the alarm and shatter the front door window, causing the alarm to sound. Later, as they flee, they are driving in their vehicle while smoking marijuana and conversing. The anxious man informs the other two that another of their acquaintances is leaving town. They appear unconcerned that everyone is leaving Detroit. After the next robbery, they had no intention of returning and intended to travel to California. The girl tells the anxious guy to join them, but he states that he cannot abandon his father. They deliver him to his residence. He enters and immediately proceeds to his father's study, where he opens a drawer and returns the house key. They have just committed the theft. His father is a personal security guard. The third man pulls money, goes to fence the stolen items, and does not receive as much as he had anticipated. He disputes with the man who purchases his goods, but the man tells him that if he wants money, he should steal money and gold. He offers him advice regarding a new employment. Money informs his pals of the situation. It's a home belonging to a loner veteran, secured by the nervous guy's father, located in an abandoned section of the city. This does not inspire confidence in the other two. Therefore, money explains why they ought to plunder it. Apparently, a wealthy lady ran over the vet's daughter, and her family gave him at least $300,000 in compensation. Alex, who is apprehensive, is more resistant to the concept than the lady. He is concerned about the consequences of taking such a large sum to them and his father's business. Later that day, after he has left, the girl, Rocky, sends Alex a text message pleading with him to do the job for her so she can rescue someone. While Alex conducts investigation on the veterinarian, Rocky is at home with her sister, mother, and her mother's new boyfriend. Both he and her mother are awful. When Alex begins asking if she wants to travel to California with her, it becomes evident that the message Rocky sent to Alex was obviously about her sister. She desires to remove her sister from their dreadful family circumstance. Alex, Rocky, and Money investigate the veterinarian's residence and surrounding area. Alex and Rocky remain alone in the automobile. Alex tells her that he will accompany them to California once the task is completed, after she has told him a story from her childhood. The return of money in the car confirms what they already knew about the residence. When a Rottweiler dog bounds at the girl's window, an elderly man calls for it, and money reveals that he is a veterinarian. They realize that he is blind and have a brief discussion about how immoral it would be to steal from him. That evening, when they return to the neighborhood, the vet's residence is dark. They first care for the canine by administering a drug-laced meat. When they attempt to open the front door, they discover that Alex's keys from his father's security company do not function. They search for a side door or window, but discover only a small window through which only Rocky can pass. She enters the residence and deactivates the alarm using a remote that Alex provides. On the mantel, she observes framed photographs of the vet's deceased daughter. Alex and Money are currently waiting for her to let them in. Once inside the home, they begin searching for the safe containing the money. Luke is rummaging through the wardrobe. The funds on the next floor are used to chloroform the elderly veteran, so he does not wake up. He discovers him asleep in his room with a video of his daughter as a child playing in the background. The veterinarian awakens and switches off the television, while Money manages to start the patrol. He descends, and the three discover a locked door, assuming that Money must be hidden behind it. Money pulls out a gun, and believing that the vet is asleep, fires a shot through the door's lock. Alex, fearful of how the presence of a firearm alters the situation, resolves to leave. He removes his footwear from the collection. Money and Rocky open the door, but the veterinarian suddenly appears and asks who is there. The two fall mute, but he hears Money and begins to follow his voice as he attempts to first deceive and then convince the elderly man. He fires at him in an attempt to frighten him, but it has no effect. When Alex hears the gunshot outside, the vet seizes his pistol and shoots him in the head. He is unaware that the female is present. She conceals herself in the wardrobe. Alex enters the house and nearly collides with the veterinarian. However, he avoids him by running around the house and locking the doors and windows before hiding in the bathroom and texting with Rocky. 
She reveals to him where she is concealing, and he follows her. Before Alex arrives, however, the veterinarian enters the closet, removes his section of the wall to disclose the safe, enters his code, which is fully visible to Rocky, and verifies that all the money is present. After determining that it has not been stolen, he locks the safe and leaves, oblivious that Rocky is hiding in the closet. Alex enters the closet and suggests calling the police. She unlocks the safe and steals the money despite Rocky's opposition. Alex, to his astonishment, believes that there are one million dollars present. They decide to escape through the bolted door, assuming that it will lead them through the basement and to a hatch leading to the backyard before they can exit through the door. The veterinarian emerges from the house and begins dragging Money's corpse to a different room. After a brief fright, he continues doing what he was doing, providing ample space for them to escape through the door. Moments later, when he discovers their shoes, he proceeds to check the safe and discovers that the money has been stolen. Alex and Rocky are currently exploring the cellar. They are stunned to discover a girl bound with army cables. As soon as she moves a ring affixed to her finger, the ring alerts the veterinarian that something is occurring in the basement. While there, Alex and Rocky discover that the girl who ran over his daughter is the same one, and Rocky decides to assist her regardless of her actions. They attempt to enter through the cellar hatch, but a veteran is waiting in front of it and begins firing. He murders the female who murdered his daughter. While Alex and Rocky are running, the veterinarian is calling to his child and announcing that his child has died while holding the corpse of a young girl. After turning off the electricity, he then pursues them in the enormous basement. Since they are also partially blinded, he nearly catches them and strangles Alex, but the man again escapes with Rocky. Outside the cellar, the now fully awake Rottweiler is waiting for them. On the second floor, the dog pursues them and corners them in one of the apartments. The windows are barred and there appears to be no escape route. In the meantime, the veterinarian catches up to them and is standing outside the room with his canine and gun. Rocky and Alex search for an escape route. When she notices a vent in the wall, he instructs her to go through it, promising to keep the door secure. Alex is attacked by the elderly man and the dog just as she enters the ventilation shaft. He falls through the window onto a one-level selling window. Down in the room, the dog follows Rocky's scent into the vent and pursues her. In order to evade her pursuers, she leaps into a vertical shaft. The veterinarian recognizes Alex's location and shoots the window, propelling him to the ground floor. Again, Alex flees, but he is apprehended in the room where he keeps his gardening equipment and where he hid the body of money. He knocks Alex unconscious and stabs him with a pair of enormous gardening shears. Rocky awakens in the shaft, injured and in distress. She begins crawling through the ducts once more after spotting two openings, one leading down inside the house and the other leading outside. The veterinarian grabs her as she attempts to break through the bars at the opening leading to the outside of the home. Rocky awakens in the cellar. She is tied up similarly to the other female. She pleads the veterinarian to let her go, promising not to tell anyone about the girl. However, he emphasizes that holding the girl in the basement was not a form of torture or punishment for what she did to his daughter. Since she had taken his child from him, he believed it was only reasonable that she give him a child in exchange. He was holding her there because she was carrying his child. With his insane logic, he concludes that Rocky is responsible for her demise and that she should be punished. In the meanwhile, Alex awakens. The vet had not stabbed him, but rather the body of money. He deceives the canine into the room and then locks it inside. Then he unlocks the front door and the veterinarian is heating something in the basement. He informs Rocky that she must now bear his child in place of the girl, but since he is not a rapist, he will only impose his sperm upon her. It is disclosed that he heated his sperm in order to inject it into her. Fortunately, Alex entered the cellar just in time, preventing the veterinarian from carrying out his plan for Rocky. Alex finds the veteran with chains and releases Rocky, who viciously attacks the elderly man. Alex informs Rocky, among other things, that calling the authorities at this time is out of the question and that they should leave the vet chained up in the basement. The two individuals take the cash and exit the basement through the front entrance. As soon as Alex opens the door, he is slain by the veteran who has managed to escape. Already daylight has broken outside. As soon as Rocky begins to run, the veterinarian dispatches his Rottweiler after her. After a lengthy pursuit, she reaches Money's car. However, when the dog catches up to her, she drops the money sack outside. In addition, once inside the vehicle, she realizes she has forgotten the key. Rocky cleverly traps the dog inside the vehicle. 
As soon as she takes the bag, however, the veterinarian re-grabs her by her hair and pulls her towards his home. When they arrive, Rocky discovers the alarm's remote and activates it. The sound utterly disorients the veterinarian, and she pushes him into the basement, believing he is dead. She grabs the cash and flees as the police draw up to the residence. Rocky is seated in an airport bar with her younger sibling. On the television at Tavern, a news anchor is discussing the recent events. A veterinarian had survived the plunge. He did not disclose, however, that she was also involved in the robbery or that money was missing. Rocky is free to live her finest life in California with her sister. That's all for today. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe to our channel Film Insider, and don't forget to hit the bell icon.